Welcome to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick, a weekly horror movie review podcast. I'm Tani Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. Subscribe to get new episodes every Wednesday. We dive into trivia, drink a little whiskey, and of course, give our no BS opinions. Join our Discord server or message us on social media to talk all things scary. And if you like the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find all these links on our website, twochicksinahorrorflick.com. Thanks for listening. Now let's get scared. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, we have a very special guest episode. So we are joined by Sergio and Cody from the Horror Bandwagon. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Ooh, yeah. we sounded way too synchronized. <laughs> I should perfect. have gone low. <laughs> yeah, what's that called? Harmonizing? That would yeah. have been mm-hmm. good. Yeah, I know, right? Boys to men level. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here and being a guest. We've been planning to do like a swap because we're going to be on your guys' show here Mm -hmm. shortly too for what feels like a year. (laughs) Almost. It's crazy. No. Well, first off, thank you for having us on. We've been, we've been honestly on your bandwagon, just like, you know, (laughs) like hearing you guys, seeing you guys everywhere. And it was like, this needs to happen. Uh, we initially wanted you to be on our podcast like a few months ago, uh, but life happens. Life is life. <laughs> but we are now making it happen. Of course, we're just going to squeeze it into this month. <laughs> All yeah. divine timing. It was meant to be today. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, you guys uh, brought to us Unfriended, which we'll get into here in a minute. I just wanted mm-hmm. to say it up front so that I didn't forget. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, you clicked on Unfriended, the yeah. episode. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but do you guys want to give a little background on your podcast for anybody who maybe hasn't heard or listened to you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, we are the horror bandwagon. My name is Sergio. And my name is Cody. And pretty much our podcast is about how I am the horror lover, and Cody is not much of a horror lover. Yeah. He is borderline, very much of a skeptical person. He breaks things apart like bit by bit he's very much of a person who's like logistical he needs to pick this <laughs> apart but at the same time he's a very much of a scaredy cat when I it am. comes to horror movies a lot mm-hmm. of things trigger him so the whole premise was like let's try to have a podcast where it's a journey of him trying to love horror and all its little nooks and crannies of the genre um but yeah and we we try to release episodes weekly we are everywhere spotify apple Podcasts, google um not soundcloud i will say that i'll but don't look us up on soundcloud i don't think we put it up there um but we also have a youtube channel where if you want to see our shining faces um we are also on a, a youtube channel where we react to movies in real time and you guys can see cody squirm mm-hmm. <laughs> oh that's oh nice yeah, yeah. <laughs> how long have you guys been releasing episodes Oh, it's been more than a year now, right? We're wow. reaching our two year anniversary this October. So, yeah, in a, well, no, September. So, September of 2020. So, we're pandemic uh, podcast babies. <laughs> yeah. How do you think? Because um, I'm curious now, like hearing you guys say that again, um, how has your journey been now? Do you think you appreciate horror movies more? Like, how's it changed? Well, I love that question. So, it's like, where are we at right now yeah. on our podcast? For me, definitely. Um, I, I know I've said it on our podcast before, too, but like coming into it, I never watched horror movies. I didn't like them. I was like, I, I have a very active imagination. So um, I just like I take too much with me when I leave horror movies. So I, I, I would always avoid them. And horror to me was always very like monolithic. I just like when I thought of horror, I thought of like saw like just like just bloodbath and for no reason, like and I didn't I didn't really appreciate all the nuance that horror can bring. So I definitely have a like brand new appreciation for horror. There's still a lot of subgenres that I <laughs> prefer to avoid. But, uh, you know, I I I have at least learned that horror is not just like one thing. There's so many different types of horror out there and some of them I actually really enjoy. Nice. Awesome. That's cool. I do feel like a lot of people feel that way who aren't into horror. They think of like Friday the 13th or mm-hmm. something and like that's it. That's what horror movies are. All of them. But there's yeah. so many different or like you know really just cash grab 
like stupid, <laughs> do you know, <laughs> type yeah. movies. Or like the torture porn type stuff, but... Which is yeah. still, we're still getting there. We we covered Saw previously in our podcast, and that was a rough, bumpy time. Um, <laughs> Cody still is not on it. And I was like, you know what would be great for our YouTube channel? Let's cover the whole Saw franchise. <laughs> we were literally on, on the road. I was actually super nervous because he was like, no, we are not doing that. And I'm like, okay. We okay, need, I was not quite so animated. There. I just said, <laughs> no, we're not, we're not doing that. <laughs> we'll get there, though. We'll, we'll, we'll try to entice him to doing it <laughs> my biggest problem with saw and you can go listen to our episode on it for the full breakdown is that i feel like uh the super complex one person is watching another person is watching another person thing would just completely fall apart because he was on the floor the entire time so there's no one to enforce this circle at some point but there is like a story to it yeah, I you guess. You know, not that the story yeah. kind of matters in those movies sometimes, but there is a story that you're following. Mm -hmm. They're not just torture porn movies. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're fans, so. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure at some point we will sit down and watch the rest of them and, and we'll see if my opinion changes at all. You mentioned there's uh, genres that you don't like. What are some of your favorite genres to watch? I love a good horror comedy. So I knew much. you were going to say that. That's his. That's his safe spot. That's yeah. his like perfect movie that can incorporate comedy and horror. Well, and like I learned that like some some of the movies that I did I would not consider horror movie that I loved like Zombieland are like falling oh, yeah. into that category. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. one of your favorite uh, horror comedy? Because that's one that isn't our favorite genre, but I mm -hmm. I do have some favorites within there. Um, they just. They really have to grab me for me to like it. What is what are some of your favorites? I mean, Zombieland is definitely up there. I feel like I feel like you can't really call scary movie a uh, uh, horror comedy because it really is just <laughs> like a parody movie. <laughs> yeah. There is one that you really liked and I forgot what it was. Oh, it was like, uh, is it? Dale and Tucker. Oh, oh yes. yes. Tucker it, and Dale versus evil. There yeah. we go. He loved it. He had a, the time of his life with that movie. <laughs> That's my favorite one of, yeah. horror, oh, okay. of horror oh, comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, yeah, for, for both of us, we're like, that's one of our top faves. We talk about it every time we go to watch another horror comedy. I feel like yeah. we compare it to that one. <laughs> Yes. It's perfect. I like, yeah, I loved it. That was the first time watched for both of us when mm -hmm. we watched it. And I love that we were like, okay, cool. We're on the on the same page here. Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the other one that that guy did? Little Evil? No. No. I've been meaning to actually. Is that, was that released on Netflix? I forgot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I know the premise. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was as good or funny, but like, it it's, good, it's like a similar hum humor. <laughs> style you know like highly yeah. recommend if you liked Tucker and Dale versus evil yeah my husband does not like horror movies but he like he loved Tucker and Dale versus evil so I think maybe horror comedy might be his thing so if we're watching that that he's willing to watch with me other yeah. than that he he gave the mist a zero he just hates that movie <laughs> 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 we actually oh, just fun. watched that a couple weeks ago. I don't think we've released the video yet. We have mm -hmm. not, but because I am very much a procrastinator and editing sometimes sucks. And so like <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. I have to force yes. myself to sit down and edit it. But yeah. But yeah, we will have we will have a video of us watching the mess. And it was a first time watch for me too. So oh, interesting. Oh, I'm well, gonna watch that. Don't, yeah. Don't say yeah, don't how say you felt about it, but oh, <laughs> we're gonna watch it. We want to see. <laughs> But there have been zeros that you have given. I have given zeros. And, oh. and like low numbered ones. So mm -hmm. uh, one that I, I mean, I personally love uh, found footage uh, mm -hmm. ones. Like some of them get really creative and I just like am so enticed with them. I know some of them are just garbage, but I just can't help it. Like I really do like it. And that those are kind of the ones that freak you out the most yeah like not even mm -hmm. on a on a like how good is this movie scale no he just is genuinely scared well they get too real for me because yeah. like yeah i can literally see myself being the person carrying the camera that got found no yeah we covered creep um in mm -hmm. our second season and the whole entire I always tell this story because it's it's just a perfect story to tell you what we're what podcasts were about so 
we're we're talking about it. We're having such a great discussion. I'm like, oh my god, he loved this movie. This was great. When we get to the ratings, he was like. I'm going to give it a two. I, I'm happy with never watching this movie ever again. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Oh. It like broke my heart. I was like, ah, how dare you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Soul. I know. I love that found footage also. That one specifically just got way too real for me at some point. And I was like, I can like, it takes me back to like my early twenties when I was single and just like going to meet up with people. And then like, you could just like get murdered. Also, you're talking about a life before me. So you had a life before me. Okay, cool. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm wondering then, so you said a two because you never want to see it again because it was too terrifying. So are your low scores mean that they're very scary? And so I should watch all the movies that are scored low? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I usually balance it out by like, I will give movies that really scared me a high score if I still enjoyed them. What mm. gets it down oh. to like a really low score for me is if I like it really got way too much for me or I just like hated the movie. There are a couple that didn't even really scare me that much. I'm just like, this was not a good movie, so I'm not going to give okay. it a good score. OK, gotcha. But yeah, I, I think the majority of the ones that are scored really low are the ones that scared me the most. Haunt was one of them. Oh, yeah. I think that, yeah, that was a scary one that really got you. I can't oh, believe. <laughs> I had just seen Haunt, I think, last year. And I can't believe that I uh, somehow did not watch that movie. Until I haven't that. seen it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> or save it. I think we're going to save it for okay. October. Okay, nice. It's a, it'll be a good one to cover in October. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. The first time we watched, uh, I watched it was uh, when we did it for the podcast. So... No shame. No shame. <laughs> Thank you. No Everyone shame still that. likes me. <laughs> what for both of you? I'm curious. What is one of your favorite episodes that you've done? So mine would be uh, last year for Pride Month. We did all LGBT themed movies, and we covered a movie called Hellbent that I I really truly enjoyed. That it was like not a good movie, <laughs> but uh, but the story is like it's it's all a bunch of. Uh, a bunch of friends who are all gay and they go to a festival and then just like slowly get hunted down yeah. by this like faceless and also shirtless character. <laughs> man uh, <laughs> chasing after you. Uh, I mean, yeah, that movie, I mean, that month, like the Pride Month the theme that we had, it was so much fun. We covered Seed of Chucky mm-hmm. during that month and that was such oh, yeah. um a fun episode because it's so we do defend seed of chucky because i just feel like it's yeah it's bonkers it's not really good but i do enjoy it it's such a fun ride um so that was really really fun when we did we did like a high school slasher month um and we talked about jawbreaker which i mean you can debate whether or not it's horror but we just wanted to have a reason to talk about jawbreaker so (laughs) um so like yeah and most of our guest uh episodes were so much fun because we just loved hanging out and just talking with other podcasters and other horror podcasters and their point of view so all of those are really really fun nice awesome really good that's cool you need to know if you don't know that um (laughs) we as a podcast also are major like child's play chucky franchise fans we're here here for the whole thing (laughs) Oh my have, god, perfect. I don't know if you can see this. It's really tiny back here, but this is my VHS, my bootleg VHS of Child's oh Play 1, 2, 3, and 4, all on one from my <laughs> uncle. So like one of the first yes. horror movies I've ever seen. Let me even grab it. I'll cut this out so that people, people me get nothing out of my chair, but it <gasps> says Oh my god. Child's wow. Play. Child's that is play. so cute. Masking tape. Very, uh, <laughs> very official. I wish I still had all my VHSs. I look at everyone's posts online and how everyone has like all these vintage VHS collections. And I'm like, damn, I really did a bad job. I look it up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't I know. For me, mine too. Uh, yeah, I'm like the space that it takes up. I don't know. I'm just I, I think it's cool for other people. But I'm like, where in the fuck would I put all that? You know what I Same. mean? Same. Oh, so bad but once we get a house i'm gonna consider that mm-hmm. moving forward being like i need a basement where i can keep my horror memorabilia uh but yeah that's that vhs is awesome honestly chucky the chucky franchise is one of our one of our favorites mm-hmm. and honestly uh, when the tv show came out we didn't expect to like it as much as we did and so happy that also that 
Don Mancini, who is a yeah. uh, gay man and uh, a director and still has this long running franchise, we also we just like, yes, love it. Yeah. He's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah I didn't expect I know I know. I knew I saw it before, um, but it had been such a long time. And when we watched it for our episode, I don't know what happened. Something broke open in my soul and I just <laughs> loved it. I loved it so much. I fucking binge, binged them all. I binged them all like straight through. And then my daughter, who's eight, she um, saw me watching them and she wanted to watch one. So we watched one that was more silly. She loves Chucky. Like... Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. It's so entertaining and so good. I, I, I want a Chucky doll real bad. You know, they have good guy dolls at Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're yes. aware. <laughs> <laughs> I bring this up. I bring this up every single every single birthday. I'm like, if you want to get me a Chucky doll, they're 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 for sale. I need them. I did have to run it by him though, because I don't want him to be like scared if I, there is a Chucky doll <laughs> right. in our house. I am I am only half joking when I say that. If we get a Chucky doll, we are getting like a lockable glass case a la Annabelle <laughs> that it will live in. <laughs> because it. I know that this one will just like move it around the house when I'm not paying oh, attention yeah. to try to scare me. It's going to be our elf on the shelf. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, when we nice. have kids. Love it. Yeah. I was like, all right, kids, place Chucky where you need to <laughs> make sure you scare daddy. Uh- <laughs> I love that. Yeah. My daughter, my daughter's girlfriend, she works at Amazon and she sent me a picture of just this row of good guy dolls and i'm oh, like oh my god i love this i love it no <laughs> you know what my favorites are are i don't know if you've ever been to like the dollar store versions of the chucky dolls and tiffany dolls they're oh, just like am. always really like it like not proportionate right like their <laughs> hands are just like ovals and really weird but uh, they're kind of the, like those childs are like oh i love you though <laughs> you know? yeah. your love no matter what but <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I need I need the dolls. I need Chucky, Tiffany, and Glenn Glenda. I need the whole family. Yeah. Yes. Eventually. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. Unexpected mutual love yes. for a franchise. <laughs> um, and then just kind of round that out. So Sergio, are there some favorite um movies or subgenres on your end that you love? Oh, just overall, you know what I realize now? So I'm 30 years old. I'm going to reveal my age. I'm done. It's all downhill from here. No, <laughs> um, no, 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 but like at 30, I just realized what one of my like favorite horror movies is. And I, I realize that it's Carrie. I do love mm. Carrie. Mm. That movie I can rewatch over and over again. I love the soundtrack. Um, you know, and I also it's also my first Stephen King book that I read. Um, and even though it is different from the book in aspects, like I really do love it. So I have to say, and this is the first time I'm saying it out loud, one of my top favorite horror movies is Carrie. Oh, nice. I love that one. It's a good yeah. Love it. I can't wait. We're going to cover it for our prom theme next month, I believe. I like Ooh, how I'm nice. asking you, even though I create the months. <laughs> I'm like, do you know? Do you know? I, I I believe that we are watching that for the for the yeah. podcast. Yes. Yeah. So I can't wait. So good. I nice. loved watching and talking about that movie. Mm-hmm. Mm. Do you like the the other renditions of it? I have not seen the other renditions. Only that one. Only the like- only that one. Like you know which one I'm talking about. Only the original <laughs> with Sissy Space Spacek. Wow. <laughs> I've seen the remake and I liked it just because I think I saw it first. I had not seen the original Carrie. I actually don't think I've seen oh. the original Carrie until we watched it for the podcast. I'd seen like scenes obviously from it. So I felt like I'd watched it, but yeah. I watched the newer one first and I liked it. Cause it's like basically a, the same. You know? Yeah. It, it, it pretty much is. I think it was a little bit more faithful to the, book i want to say i haven't seen it in so long the the remake we're talking about the one where judy greer's in it and yeah um chloe grace moretz yes was yeah. carrie yeah yeah i i don't know i i need to rewatch it and collect my thoughts uh, but there also is i think a t made for tv version one which is a lot longer oh, um, i haven't seen that me neither but i can't if i have to give you my official rankings i need to rewatch the films in order to to give you that but this the, the sissy space one will always come out on top 
Yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, since the franchise of Chucky is so good and we're talking about the remakes, what did you think of the remake of Child's Play? Oh, boo. <laughs> Thumbs down. I'm going to tell you when when <laughs> I was so on board up until the movie came out. Yeah. And my thoughts have settled. I was like, yes, I actually like this idea. I was so gung ho, right? Yeah. I was mm-hmm. looking forward to this movie. I was I, like, I was dragged along to it. It was the first one that we <laughs> saw live together. That was before we created oh, wow. the podcast. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. It was. Okay. Um, but we were, I was so gung ho about it. And then afterwards, and when my thoughts have settled, I'm like, yeah, not good. And no wonder they didn't really continue with that and it's disappointing but then now i have such a major respect for don mancini and uh don mancini has gone on record to be like no i have really want nothing to do with whatever they're doing yeah and i was so like why are you why are you being like that but now i'm like no i totally get it like <laughs> uh, yeah cosplay is like his baby and someone decides to do their own thing and not have anything to do with it it's so uh, like i totally get it <laughs> well, well i mean i feel like he always talks about too like it's one thing to remake a franchise that's sort of like dead, you know, but like we are actively involved in this franchise and have been yes. for how many years. And now you like, why you're going to remake it right now when we still have stuff in the works like that just exactly. doesn't make sense. But I agree. I felt like the, the concept was good. Like I was excited yeah. for it. And I was like, okay, Aubrey, Pro- Aubrey Plaza. Sure. Like, okay, maybe this could be good. But then mm. you watch it and you're like, what the fuck happened here? I mean, it they- just... <laughs> They Bell really apart. missed opportunities in that. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I do apologize. I have a concoction in my hand, which is this here. It is. I've never had caffeine with tequila before. Oh. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's uh, what what is it called? It's like so it's it's it's, it's, it's Patron. Sort of, it's so uh, we, he has uh, coffee Patron. Coffee Patron. Oh, and okay. <laughs> And so we have made sort of a twist on a white Russian. Uh, but I've never that. had caffeine and alcohol before. So I may or may mm. not just be off the walls at some Ooh. point. So I'm, I, I really I like do apologize in advance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shoot. I was going to have an Irish coffee. I was totally going <sighs> to do it, but I ran out of time. So we just ran oh. in here. Oh, do you I, have the stuff to make it? I should text my husband to make me an Irish coffee. I mean, listen, I also did the same thing. I was like, I'm not going to drink. And then I came in here and I was like, OK, now I want to drink. And so yes. I might. So at some point we can take a little break and go make uh, some other Perfect. drinks. Don't worry. This is probably going to last me with the episode. So don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but OK, just to clarify, it's put it's coffee flavored Patron. Yeah, it's coffee flavored Patron. I think it's a little with- thicker. Mixed with okay. iced coffee and milk is what he's drinking. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I didn't have anything like to fluff it up. Like we didn't have chocolate syrup or uh, vanilla syrup or anything like that to make it fancy. So I was like, all right, we have milk and we have coffee and we have sugar. All right, I let's mean, just do that. How does it taste? Pretty good. But also okay. I've been drinking it for a bit. So now I'm like, all right. <laughs> I love this. this. <laughs> I, it sounds- Which usually... Ha- Weird. It usually happens with tequila w- okay. with me. It was like, at first it's like, whoo, but then eventually it's just water. <laughs> I love, love, love co- the Irish coffee with peanut butter whiskey, <gasps> Bailey's and coffee. It is so good. I'm hoping my husband isn't like asleep on the sofa. He might bring me one. <laughs> I texted him. I texted him. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Um, so this is a great segue because that's what you're drinking. So, Cody, what are you drinking? So I am drinking a uh, a local cider um, that is called Hop Lemon Sherbet Cider. Oh. And it sort of just tastes like a shandy. Um, that sounds great. Yeah, it does. Because I, 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 don't like, I don't like beer, but I love cider. And I'm also a huge fan of hops. So I saw this at, at the store and I was like, oh, I'll try it. Why not? And it's, it's good. It, it really does just taste like a shandy. Nice. That sounds yummy. Yeah. Felicia, what about you? What are you yeah. doing? Uh, okay. So in the future, like I said, Irish coffee. I in here. So I'm really, yeah, I think that he will, he's going to bring me an Irish coffee. So I'm excited about yes. that. But for right now, I do have a thing of water and I have these new um, botanical beverages. It's called Petal and it's elderberry white tea flower. It's like these petal um, oh, wow. drinks. They're so yummy. I had their original rose the other day. I meant to tell you, Tawny, because I was supposed to give her an op- update. It was super good. And then I had rose mint. Super good. Just like this really good flavor. Because what I, I don't like about sparkling waters is that it's mainly just sparkling water with like this little 
hint yeah. of some type of flavor. I don't like that. These are really good. It tastes like it could be like a mo- uh, like a cocktail with the amount of flavor, but it's not too sugary. So, anyways, mm. I'm really digging these these waters. That sounds good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then soon yeah. an Irish coffee, and I don't know how those <laughs> all those things are going to go together, but we'll see. <laughs> what about you, Tony? Um, I'm drinking an orange cream Olipop. Ooh, I love very these. nice. That sounds good. I drink these. Uh, we have like a subscription box now to this. Like we get them every two weeks. They're so yeah. so. Good. Are those alcohol with alcohol or there's no alcohol? No, in those? no. Olipop. I want that. Yeah, so they're good. good. They're, there's like very little sugar. So it's got like five grams of sugar in this one, but it's like three to five normally per can. But it's got like plant fiber, like botanicals and shit in mm. it. And like, uh, what's it called? Prebiotics. So it's like mm. better for you soda, basically. And they're really good. Love them. I think these pedal things good. are supposed to be like good for your body, too. Mm. I don't know. And then well, I'm going to mix this so with a little healthy. bit of vodka. <laughs> I did, so just order, I'm like, literally just no, like, I did just order a, a coffee. <laughs> okay, good. I'm I will be mixing this with here. <laughs> also. No, an orange cream always reminds me, like, takes me back to my childhood. Mm. Anything, if you mm. say orange cream to me, I'm like, ah, to be a child again. Yes. <laughs> it's very um, summery my, too. One of my favorite beers is Orange Blossom. It's called Orange Blossom <gasps> Beer. And it's kind of has that, that type of orange sickle flavor. Super good. Love it. So good. <sighs> um, okay, you guys ready to jump into this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so like mentioned earlier, we're talking about Unfriended from 2014, which is a computer screen supernatural horror film directed by Levon Gabriazzi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. <laughs> and produced by Timur. Well, I'm not even going to try to say that, that guy's last name. The first feature film to be entirely set on a computer screen. I was curious about this, actually. So I did a little bit of research. I'm not I'm not sure that that's true. Oh, no. I was like also claiming that it was the first one. Uh, But I yeah, I allegedly. (laughs) Yeah, I haven't seen the other one that I found that was earlier. It was like from 2006. Oh, and it's called The Collingswood Story. Ooh, I like the name. The Collingswood (laughs) Story. But I haven't watched it. I just saw it in a list of movies that are similar, that are in the same format. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Not 100% sure. But um, real quick, why? Because usually when we have guests, we have them just pick a movie. And we usually say, like, whatever one you want to talk about. So why did you guys pick this movie to bring onto our, our show? Well, uh, this is going to be an interesting answer because I was told that we were told Unfriended was the, uh, no, was the movie. No, no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's not get it twisted. Let's not get it twisted. <laughs> Uh, no, you said what movie, and I said Unfriended. Oh no, wait, no, I did bring it up to in, to, in order to entice him. I said like it's gonna be Unfriended. So I did not run it by him. I do have to admit that. Um, <laughs> but yes, we were given the choice, and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity because Unfriended was a movie. I do, do I want to before we started the podcast. It. I think it was after we started the podcast, but we hadn't been doing it for long. But definitely we, before the movie host. Yes, yeah, so we right. watched okay. we watched Unfriended, and it's one of the one of the few, at least recently, that I have I've I've used my stop option in the he, middle of the movie. And he has not done this. Like I don't even think I ever actually think that that was the last one that I stopped because you found it so scary, and you were like done i don't want to keep going and i can tell you where we stopped which was um it was right before the blender scene ken ken Mm -hmm. uh ken's demise Uh that's where he was like nope we're we're stopping i don't want to keep watching this anymore so we stopped it and so far uh, everyone that we tell this story to has always come up to us and be like but you guys watch host Mm -hmm. and you didn't find that scary i did find that scary um but I but by by the time we watched Host, he's seen a few movies, mm-hmm. so I feel like you 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 got to a good point. But I figured this is a great opportunity. Let's finally you know finish what we started and <laughs> hop on. <laughs> you know we're gonna go into war and we're going to finish this movie, which we did. Imagine at some point Cody's like, and at this point I did not finish the movie. I will say <laughs> bye. <laughs> <Get> bye <everyone. laughs> I'll just sit here in silence. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is why we chose it. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. Did you say that it's the only time or one of the only times? It's one of the only times. It was, I think that one, and it's been a while. I haven't stopped a movie in a long time. Um, and I think this was the last one that I actually stopped, but this was like when we went even like well before the podcast, when we first started watching horror movies together, it was on the, uh, one of my requirements. The only like reason that I agreed to it was that I was allowed to say stop at any point in any movie. I could just say, we don't want to watch this anymore. Yeah. Um, and I did use it a couple times at the beginning. This is, I think, the most recent one, and it has been a long time. The only other one I would have to say was that I remember is It, Chapter One. The <laughs> remake? The remake. He, and I wasn't even, like, really actively watching that one. It was, like, I was sitting on the couch while you were watching it, and I was, like, looking up to, like, because I get, like, sucked in by the story, but then it's also really scary, and I don't want to watch it anymore. <laughs> yeah. So he was playing games on his like tablet. So I would tell him to look at the tablet at some point. See, I, I'm caring. I, yeah. I, I do. I am a le- loving fiance. I never said that you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this doesn't sound like a torturous like situation. Like I'm excited to watch you squirm and hate this. This, so. <laughs> this sounds like the way I watch horror movies with my my daughter my eight-year-old daughter <laughs> okay look at your tablet <laughs> yeah. okay you can look it, now it's pretty much yeah it was look pretty away. much that <laughs> good to know okay i'm excited for the update on how you felt about it second time through mm-hmm. um okay so for the cast we have courtney halverson who plays val shelly hennig who plays blair moses storm is mitch Will Peltz is Adam and Renee. Oh, two more. Renee Olstead is Jess and Jacob Wysocki. Hope I'm saying that right. Played Ken. Um, budget was one million. Box office was sixty two point nine million. Ooh, they did good. Yes. Yep. Um, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a sixty two percent and uh, seventy seven or sorry seventy four percent of Google users liked this movie and Letterbox gave it a two point three. Ooh. Out of five, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Oof. Yeah. Um, All right. Are we ready for the recap? I didn't write this one. I took it from Wikipedia. I love your honesty. (laughs) (laughs) Two to five-ish minutes with Wikipedia's uh, recap that I deleted some sentences out of. (laughs) (laughs) So so it's the abridged version. Yeah. Right. By Tommy. Yes. Yes. Okay, you're right. Yes. <laughs> okay, turn back now if you don't want this spoiled for you. High school student Laura Barnes committed suicide by gunshot after an anonymous user uploaded a video of her passing out and defecating at a party, and the video went viral. One year later, her former childhood best friend Blair is chatting with her boyfriend Mitch on Skype. They are joined by their friends and classmates, Jess, Ken, At- and Adam, and an unknown user known as Billy227. The group of friends tries various ways to get rid of the intruder, but are unsuccessful each time. Blair looks up the account and realizes that it belonged to Laura Barnes. The group suspects that a classmate, uh, Val Rommel, is pranking them. After they invite Val to their chat, Jess's Facebook page is updated with embarrassing photos of Val at a party. Jess denies uploading the photos and deletes them from her account, but the pictures instantly reappear on Adam's account. Val receives a message or picture not visible to the others, which she considers a threat. Angry, she calls 911 to report that she is being harassed and abruptly leaves the chat. The group receives a photo with Val and Laura's Facebook messages from before Laura's death, with Val telling Laura to kill herself. Val reappears on the chat, sitting motionless and silent next to a bottle of bleach before collapsing. Police officers arrive shortly after. The friends eavesdrop and learn that Val died from a presumed suicide. Billy227 then sends each of the friends a personalized message prov- providing or proving intimate knowledge of their secrets. In Blair's case, which is the only one visible to us as the audience, this turns out to be a couple of pictures revealing that she had an affair with Adam. Ken distributes a program to remove Billy227 from the chat and then attempts to call the police. However, the 911 operator turns out to be the intruder and re-enters the chat, revealing a camera view from the other side of Ken's room. He approaches the camera source and his Skype is briefly cut before it shows him killing himself with a blender. 
Billy slash Laura forces the remaining four friends to play a game of Never Have I Ever, stating that the loser will die. During the course of the game, it's revealed that Jess started a rumor that Blair had an eating disorder, Blair stole and crashed Jess's mother's car, Mitch made out with Laura, and also reported Adam to the police for dealing cannabis. I like how uh, (laughs) official that was. (laughs) Um, Selling weed. Jess stole $800 from Adam, and Adam offered to trade Jess's life for the others in the group. A robe breaks out, and drunken Adam finally loses his temper and uses the game to force Blair to reveal that she's no longer a virgin, having slept with him behind Mitch's back. Mitch is distraught and retaliates by forcing Adam to admit he roofied a classmate, had sex with her, and then forced her to abort um, the resulting pregnancy. Blair and Adam receive messages uh, sent remotely to their printers, which they refuse to show to Mitch and Jess. Mitch threatens to leave if Blair does not show the note, and Laura warns that Mitch will die if he signs off. In a moment of panic, Blair shows her paper, which states, if you reveal this note, Adam will die. Adam shoots himself, revealing that he had the same note except for Blair. Laura continues the game, asking Jess if she defaced her grave. When Blair convinces Jess not to continue playing, Laura cuts the lights in Jess's house and disconnects her video feed. Blair looks for help on chat roulette and has a stranger send the police to Jess's house. Soon after, Jess's Skype reconnects, showing her with an activated curling iron forced down her throat, killing her. Laura cuts the lights in Blair and Mitch's house, uh, wanting them to confess who uploaded the video. Blair tells her that Mitch was the one who posted it. Mitch grabs a knife and stabs himself in the eye. Laura thanks Blair, but begins counting down again. Blair attempts to remind Laura about their friendship, but Laura uploads an extended version of the party video to Blair's Facebook, which reveals Blair as the camera operator for the original video. Laura's spirit then slams Blair's laptop shut and violently lunges at her. The end. Mm. Oof. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so strange um to think that it's if overall the concept is pretty simple and it's like something is taken over while you're on Skype or th- through your computer yet there's a lot of shit that happens uh, in yeah. between that. Yeah. It's like to get to the end there's a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. yeah, like the dynamic and the relationship between the friends and this event is very complex, which is why I struggled kind of writing it myself, because I was like, I either condense this down to like three sentences. It's like a girl is bullied and commits suicide and then, uh, you know, possesses this friend group through technology and they all yeah. die <laughs> like either that or it's like you got to tell the whole thing like exactly you, know? you really do have to tell the whole thing a little bit to be like uh n- no there, there's a lot why this is important you know there is because overall there is a little bit of a lesson here about like bullying and cyberbullying, um and that as much as you know we're all kind of have this facade we're all guilty in some sort of way you know Uh, or took part in that even though you think that you didn't um which which i i like so that's why it's like you can't you can't really sum it up in three sentences there's a lot more (laughs) yeah (laughs) a lot of events too it is like a packed movie so Yeah. yeah so why don't we start with just some overalls um i feel like we kind of got uh maybe like Cody, how you felt about first watch, but how did you guys feel overall about this movie? I didn't hate it. Um, <laughs> I I can at least like, this is one of those movies where uh, the, it definitely s- did still scare me this time. Um, there were a couple scenes where I was like, this is like almost a little too much. Well, especially after the, the during the territory of you continuing the movie and yes. not knowing what's happening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I did at least know ahead of time that there was a jump scare at the end. So I was able to not look at the TV. (laughs) I hate jump scares a lot. So, um, that, that would have, if if I had not known that was coming, that would have made me kind of mad, but (laughs) I like, I I thought that it was an interesting movie overall because it like the, the, the moral really is a little more than just cyberbullying. It's also that like, you know, sometimes your friends do things that are like really messed up and they just mean it as a joke, but it's not a joke to you and that there are consequences both to you. And then, uh, you know, eventually when you come back as a ghost to them, um, as it happens, you know, (laughs) as you do. Yeah. 
But yeah, it was it 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 really wasn't that bad at the end of the day. I don't know. I enjoy this movie. I I had a good time. Um, there are heavy elements where I kind of forgot about, yeah. like the especially the first scene, which is like you see the video of the suicide, and I'm like, oh wow, like that's I forgot how heavy this yeah. this is. Um, and to think that I was released in I think you said 2014, 2015. Yeah, 2014. Uh, 2014, um, where I kind of forgot about that. But I overall like it. Um, some aspects are a little bit dated, obviously, just because <laughs> technology has changed. Um, but yeah, overall, I like it. I do find it funny that they do end up being very... Um, they do take interesting ways on incorporating the element of being online, using Skype, using Facebook, all these different aspects of it. I really did enjoy. Um, but also the funny aspect of this is a haunting. This is pretty much a ghost or like something possessing um, the computer, which is a little bit funny and cheesy. But at the same time, really cool to see. Mm -hmm. I, it, was it was something I never seen before, especially the first time I saw it. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Felicia, do you want me to go next? I made you go next last time. Either way. <laughs> Either way. Whatever you want. <laughs> um, I feel like I liked it. I did I definitely didn't hate it. It I agree that like it's very creative. I liked the mm -hmm. ideas of it. I also forgot about how dark it was for some reason. Like I was like, oh shit, I forgot that there were these really serious moments. And I forgot how kind of scary it was in other moments. And mm -hmm. I think I was mixing this movie up in my head with like the handful of other movies that are similar. Yeah. Like the den, uh, friend request, which I actually put on to scroll to like scrub through. Cause I was like confusing the main girl, I mm -hmm. think with the main girl in this, but that movie is not recorded through the screen. So I don't know why I was so it yeah. must just be the name and the girl. I also do remember that one and remember it also having a really cheesy, funny, uh, synopsis or like plot line <laughs> yeah it, it, but it also was like kind of dark like i just watched a couple minutes of it and i was like mm -hmm. oh god anyway um but yeah i i liked it it was kind of fun it is like a time capsule a little bit like you're looking at it and you're like oh my god that is what my computer it's like interface mm -hmm. used to look like uh it just took me right back <laughs> <laughs> how did you feel felicia uh i think i'm right aligned aligned with all of you i didn't hate it I would venture <laughs> to say I liked it. There were, I, I agree with you guys. I liked the concept. I liked the idea. I liked seeing, navigating these different, like looking up the articles and talking to your friends and trying to kick this person out. I loved the, um, the game that Laura played with them that yeah. had them confessing things that you could see they didn't want to confess. And so I really liked all of those elements. And then the piece that I didn't like is, and I wish I wasn't this way, but when I'm brought, <laughs> I really wish I wasn't this way. When I'm brought out of the reality of it, it really bothers me. So like when Cody was saying, oh, I don't like it when it's too real. I like it when I'm so scared because I feel like I'm a part of something that's real. So there's yeah. little things you're going to think of obnoxious, but there's like little things acting wise um, where I felt like, uh, OK, but I'm still going to I'm still going to go with it or little things like um, I it was really bothering me that when she was searching and looking at different things. She was not saying anything. It was just silent. And she was highlighting things because I mm. felt like I was being shown. That's what I do as a corporate trainer. <laughs> what I'm doing, I'm like highlighting things. It was this clear was. that they're like, we want you to look at this and this and this. And some of the things they were saying, I'm like, oh, why isn't anybody just saying, oh, my God, I got this message from Laura and like fucking share information. Like there's yeah. like these different things I didn't feel yeah. were realistic um, that were bringing me out. But then there was elements that were bringing me back in as well. And we'll get to it. The ending, I did not like that ending. I, I don't know what other ending I would have done, but I just wished it was something different than that. 
So, um, but yeah, like I would watch it again. I actually was watching it while I was getting ready today. And I was telling my, I was trying to get one of my teens to watch it with me. They're scaredy cats, but I want, I was like, Hey, <laughs> let's watch this scary movie with me. So I kind of do want to see it again. Um, some mm-hmm. of the pieces that when I watched it again, I was able to see some stuff that I didn't notice before. So that was kind of fun, but yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Yeah. I actually think that it's really funny. You bring up that, like, there are times where the movie is clearly just like, doing exposition via making you read the screen because there were multiple times where like you would look, you, you turn to me and we're like, wait, they've, they've been on Skype this whole time and nobody is saying anything. Like you're just like sitting in silence on Skype while you're like searching the internet and not being like, guys, listen to what I just saw. Yes. I, so I actually have a thing about this. Yeah. Um, I think they did have them. I don't think they are supposed to be actually silent. So it said in an earlier cut of the film, the character's dialogue could be heard during scenes of like text messaging between them. Mm-hmm. But in the final version, all of that background um, gets like brought down. And I think it was a conscious choice of like, it's too much to be listening to these people talking and trying to read what they want you to read on screen. I mean, I so I'm going to give two thoughts here. One where I'm like, I feel like it probably would have added to the anxiety or and the um, suspense to keep that noise in the background to be like, oh, my God, so much is happening. But like, you know. It's an experience and I I would like to experience that. But at the same time, he probably didn't intend to do this, but I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, Maybe it's because we're in the POV of Blair and we're just, you know, cutting Mm -hmm. their voices out because we're focused on this. So if someone were like, Blair, did you hear that? We're like, oh, um, yeah, I forgot, because we're Blair, we're, we're the POV. And that does happen once. Like there is a moment where somebody's like, Blair, hello, like talk to us. <laughs> and then we go back into it because we get that like paranormal activity uh, sound. I don't know if you guys heard it, where it's just like, oh the, yeah. Brrr. Oh, you I know, didn't whenever catch something's it. like scary happening. Every, every time there's going to be a ghost doing anything. It, it's literally it's like a baseline, this is an unofficial like, paranormal like, activity movie because they have that like just low vibration that you can hear every time the ghost is going to do something. Yeah. Mm. I missed out on that because I had Which a turn way also, down. Like, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> like from directly from paranormal activity. If It seems like they use the same sound. Yeah. yeah. See, those moments... But, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Mine was a whole different thought. <laughs> I was going to say, I, um, I felt that that's what was we were experiencing is she was tuning them out. Um, mm-hmm. But then I would like her to say something. It yeah, was just silent no, totally. clicking. So at least give oh, me the yeah. people talking in the background, even if it's lower or have her saying, what the fuck? Or, or what? Holy moly whatever Good whatever point. they're gonna say like she's clicking around or like what is this holy shit you know just like just some reaction versus yeah exactly. now let me show you all of these things that we're doing here do you see mm-hmm. this right here i'm gonna memorialize her her account right here you know <laughs> well because it also feels a little disconnected when she does go back and we get the actress of who we're supposed to be just being not affected by it and just Mm -hmm. going back into it which makes it feel like yeah all these like clickings around happened afterwards and they added it in you know Um, so it wasn't as consistent the reaction uh or being in which is hard i I get it it's 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 probably the one of the first you know obviously we had another one one that came out but one of the first that we're trying to figure that out um having this like found footage screen movie yeah I had a random thought. I, I forgot I what tr- I was going to say. Oh my God. I like, I can't get over that. Can make salsa in a blender. I'm just going to completely uh. change the subject. <laughs> That's a good you point. You don't mix. I would. I don't mind. My husband makes bad? salsa in a blender. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's bad. I, I guess it I depends. Just, yeah. Personally, I, you can just make it like just as is and mix it together or make like a whole puree. Well, like in my husband's I <laughs> defense, I think it's like a food processor thing. It's not like the blender I use for my shakes. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, bringing guess- that up, I didn't really. That was one death that I was like, I mean, it was gory, but I thought I felt like it was a little corny. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that. This is actually the part of the movie that uh, that you I originally quit because yeah. uh, all of a sudden we just had like the view of him from the background, like through the vent. And that's when I was yeah. like, nah, I can't oh, do yes. this anymore. 
I do think, like, how, how do you feel about like the rest of the movie? Because I feel like you quit during the most scary. It's like the hype. That's the scariest moment to me. Personally. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I, I was able to get through it because I think like, like two years ago when we first watched this for the first time, we, um, afterwards, because I at least wanted to like know what happened. I think we watched like the dead meat video. Oh yeah. It. Yeah. We did. So like, yeah, I at did. least I like forgot. knew okay. sort of what happens with the rest of the movie. Um, I, I don't know. I, cause I do, I do agree that like, that was the scariest part when like you, you thought that you could get away from it. I think the only other really scary part was when Adam called 911 and then like you have the normal conversation then they're like and then it's clear that he's talking to the ghost. That was the other part that I was oh, like, oh, yeah. no. You also were very shocked by the death of Mitch, which is the knife. Yes. Like, yeah. hit, knife down, which was for Ooh. me shocking because I kind of forgot that they had this kind of gore-esque stuff in it, um, which is a weird because I have this other thought where I was like, I feel like they could have pushed it a little bit further. I agree. I feel like they could could have definitely, you know, amped it up a little bit more. I I hated I hated the blender scene because I felt like it was your stereotypical 2014 jump scare where it's like cuts in and out, and I'm like, all right, cool, we're done with that, I guess. <laughs> it's yeah. also like it's it's the exact same thing that is so I think overused now of like the person who drops something down to the garbage disposal has to like reach down into it. Yes. It's, this, it's, it's literally the same thing. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I agree. I, I, it's already rated R like, and I, I'm sure that they did it for budget reasons. Yeah. But it's like, I do wish there had been a little bit more. We're really cutting away so fast that you barely get to see what's going on. And I think it kind of takes away from the, from the like heaviness of it of like, you really are, can be injured by these by, by these events, right? Or this ghost. Yeah. But I do think that that's the scariest point. And uh, Felicia and I have talked about this multiple times. Well, I think one of the scariest things that I can think of is the idea of somebody being in my house, like without my knowledge. And yeah, like the fact, like, so that's why I think that's the scariest moment is because like this thing is, has been placed there <laughs> for mm -hmm. who fucking knows how long. And now it's like right behind him. I don't know. That was very scary. But then it kind of, you know, I didn't hate the deaths, but I did feel like, you know, I, yeah. that's just a scarier thing to me. I, I agree. That is like that. that is one of my fears. It, there there was a point in time where like I would like after I locked up, just like go ahead and double check all the closets, like make yeah. sure that I'm good. Smart, um, smart. <laughs> but I. um Oh, oh something that I think um, that, that I both sort of liked and I feel like they could have pressed a little bit further is. Uh, I, I really like like going through the webcams and how you had all the stuttering and stuff from the webcams. And sometimes you would have them like they'd be moving around and then it would do that thing where like their face would like sort of half freeze in one in one portion. You could like still see that they were there in that, those frames while they're still like over here because the camera hasn't fully caught up yet. Something I wish that they would have done just to like further press that like. Like they are all like being haunted. It's like, yeah, like, like sort of like have oh, her yeah. face sort of like show up in those, in those glitches. I think that that was something you could have played up a little bit more because the glitches did feed into the scariness that like, you just like, it, it was almost like there was the, the even further breakdown of communication between everybody because mm. you're constantly fighting your poor internet connection. <laughs> Very scary. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Wi-Fi. No, we're <laughs> fucked. <laughs> yeah, this is so true. I and I wanted to just say I agree. I loved how they, they, the um, the one guy. Oh, what's his name? The one that um, the blender guy. Ken. 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 Ken yeah. So Ken gets up, and then we, as an audience, go, oh, and then everyone kind of reacts together, like we're all on the Skype call. Wait, wait a second, Ken, 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 get, get yeah. up again, get up again, and because we're thinking it, we're probably saying, "Oh my God, wait, <laughs> why do we yeah. look?" I love that how they were. And he went and he was like discovering. I thought that was so cool. I just thought his his death was a little. He's like ah ah in the blender. And, <laughs> and I don't even remember. Was this like head in the blender? How does that even? He, it was. Like, I think. I think. No, his throat was. Was on the blender, yeah. on the blade. yeah, but like the the like glass pitcher broke off oh. at some point, so it was like just the blades exposed. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty gross. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you really have to kind of like get there in your head because yeah. I don't think they like show you. You just have to assume like, oh, okay, now the top of the blender is gone. I guess, and yeah, yeah. I will. I will say one more thing. Sorry if I'm uh, 
keeping from the next uh, topic. Oh, the next topic but, is whatever comes next. Yeah. Oh, so. cool. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but I will say, okay, one, the main actress here, Blair, um, I, I do appreciate her acting here because we covered the movie Ouija uh, from 2014 and she's in that and her acting is not good in that movie <laughs> okay. it is not good so revisiting this and remembering that she that's why well, that was her i'm like where was this talent like i felt like she did 10 <laughs> times better in this movie she's really crying and she's really feeling these emotions so i'm like man maybe she just didn't get the role she wanted and she was like fuck this is a paycheck um, oh. <laughs> actors Ouija. never do that okay because oh, we yeah, want to no, enjoy the movie <laughs> <laughs> but i will say besides her who i think was the better actor out of the rest i think if we had uh, i feel so shitty saying this but i i feel like if we had better actors because there's so, there's a lot of heavy elements and a lot of heavy dialogue that they're going through and it relies on these actors to really you know bring it bring it home if we had better actors it would i think it would have risen the the rating up for me yeah me too i yeah i thought watching it, it like felicia's gonna dislike this acting i knew it i was like <laughs> <laughs> this is we got some not great acting in here and it was kind of throwing me off too and i think yeah. especially like this isn't fair necessarily because it's a later movie but i feel like host Man, I feel like Host is the, like, this, yeah. I don't know how you do a better job of this than Host. So And true. so it's kind of unfair to this movie to have seen that now <laughs> and be comparing it. But I think they did, like, um, try to do a lot of uh, stuff to make it feel like it was natural. So maybe that helped her as an actress. Like, you know, they, they did record together on laptop screens. They um, did, like, big, long takes. So it wasn't, uh, you know broken up i don't think as much as it oh, could have okay. been and um i read this thing this is like two other two of the other actors or mm -hmm. uh renee olstead and courtney Hal halverson under the directions instruction watched dozens of recorded web chat videos between friends which resulted in arguments in order to prepare for the jess and val argument over the tagged photos olstead and oh. halverson commented that they could not believe the lengths modern teenagers would go to argue online Oh. So I liked that because I felt like I did like what they were all doing. You know, like I felt like the the actions and the the conversations and stuff were realistic yeah. to teenagers. Yeah. It's just sometimes, yeah, it's like the acting was a little off, but I think maybe it was kind of so it seemed like sometimes it was some um like ad libbing, you know, because they probably had to fill some space. And I think that's where you really run into some yeah. of this like that doesn't feel natural, you know. I do like one aspect. I don't know why, but I, I'm going to do my best to explain it. But one aspect was when uh, I don't know what happened, but Blair uh, realized, realized maybe it's somebody else uh, contacting her through Facebook. And then she kind of like calms herself down and it goes back into the chat and, she, and they're talking about concert tickets. And she's like, oh, wait, so guys, like what where, what seat are we at? What seat? Are we? It just seems so that part seemed realistic because I was like, oh, it, their kids like talking about concert, yeah. like they're they're figuring out where the seats. It's it seems like okay, no, the 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 bad thing is has gone away for a second. So I believe that that friendship yeah. part there. Another scene that I I liked for some reason I don't know why. Um, Jess, I want to say who's blonde girl. I think that is Jess. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jess. The, when they're during during the argument between them, um, between her and Val. Uh, for some reason, when she's like going in on her, she goes like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Did you just call me trash? Did you just call oh, me yeah. trash. Like I was like, <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. I was like, all right. I like how the rest of the argument also becomes about trash. Like who's trash and why at that point? Like <laughs> I liked I did that it's again. It's so real. I feel yeah. like uh, that would have been me. I was like, oh yeah, you are trash. I am saying that, okay? Yeah. S you know who sips I tequila coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I think was the best actor for me is mm -hmm. Ken, actually. I felt like mm. there wasn't a moment to me where I was like, this doesn't, this guy feels like somebody pretending to be a teenager. I don't, I, <laughs> I don't know. I just, he had none of those moments that I can remember or that I picked up on where it's yeah. like, oh, I can tell you're filling the space, you know? I don't know. Maybe it was because he felt so different from the rest of the characters yeah. in his personality, you know? But 
I would say my my favorite. I have it here. The character I liked the most, or that I thought I did the best, thought did the best job was, uh, and he's not a likable character, but Adam. <laughs> I think right from the beginning, I I was curious if he really was like drunk or stoned because just mm-hmm. his eyes were glassy. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't like the gun piece. I thought I literally was like. You're just you just showed up to a conversation with your friends with a gun like I know they need the gun in the environment. But Mm -hmm. I think that could have came up where he was like, I'll come over and I'll beat your ass to the little uh, the ghost guest in the Skype (laughs) when he's doing that. And they're like, come on, stop at him. He could be like, my dad has guns. I will come over there, you know, trying to be a tough guy. But instead he has picks up this gone he's like rah, rah, rah. like oh i was like whoa what what the hell is happening here but other than that i um was watching him all the way through and i i enjoyed his performance better than all of them the lead um girl towards the end as it was picking up um i yeah. re- really liked her and i liked her in moments as well um and you know yeah but that's who i jotted down i i, I did sorry not to be to cut you off but really quickly i did read that i don't know if the lead girl knew this but at least the rest of them they were told that they were um that they were innocent during the whole time um during their duration of the movie until they saw it and realized that they also took part in the bullying um oh. so which also was like that's so interesting because you kind of have to i mean you can be a good actor but you it would be really nice to have them actually really believe 100 percent that they are innocent and they didn't mean to even though there are moments that um they'll reveal that laura also is a bully and a mean person yeah 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 I was going to say, I actually thought, you know, while we're on the topic of of the acting in here that was good, um, which sounded a lot shadier than I meant. I know. (laughs) Uh, I actually thought that that Mitch is acting like, especially after he found out about the affair between Adam and Blair, I thought was really good that he like the, the sort of like he knew that he needed to still be on chat because he wanted to not die. But that annoyed me that scene where i they were just the the whole i do like the the concept of them having a printout and they yeah. read it and they're like having to because you as an audience member also don't know what the fuck is happening yeah. yeah so when they reveal it i'm like bro mitch just shut up just, just like just stop but i guess it was effective i guess it was effective because i was reacting to it yeah yeah, I also liked this idea, and I actually even thought in my head as I was watching this, I, I think I want—I had a thought about Child's Play 2019, <laughs> which I was like, this is what that could have been, you know? Because there was, like, this concept of, like, oh, it's connected to, like, anything in your house that yes. is connected to the internet. Oh, and yeah. so I like this connectivity. You know, it's not just the computer. It's your phone. It's the printer. It's the lights. Like, if you have a smart house, anything that's connected to the internet, this thing has access to. You know, Mm -hmm. they only they only did that a couple times in this movie, but I liked that it extended beyond the computer. It made it feel less escapable. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. During those scenes with Mitch, um, again, yeah, I think when things started to amp up, people got real good. Like I thought Jess uh, was believably terrified as well. Um, I have right here prom sex. So this was in the beginning. This felt yeah. like uh, like an ad lib sort of situation. You know, they're flirting and she's like, you know, prom's the night. And he's like, really? You're not lying to me? You're not lying to me? I'm like, oh, fucking this is not realistic. And then he's well, like, I- OK, cool. <laughs> Woohoo! Yay. And I'm like, OK. <laughs> I hope well, this is I mean, better. <laughs> followed, followed immediately by him pulling out a knife to get her to take her shirt off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like it when you're violent. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> These kids. <laughs> yeah, that was, I was like, okay, we're in for it now. But they did. As things got escalated, I thought that they got better. No, that's actually true. I do, I do see as it escalates that they got better. Um, I also like the Never Have I Ever game yeah um was Mm. really effective really effective uh idea to to introduce that and um i mean the only thing that i will say that i mean i'm I'm surprised you haven't brought it up the whole idea was like why don't they just 
turn off their computers? Why don't they just log off, turn off the Wi-Fi, leave your house? Um, I did read somewhere that the director apparently, uh, his not excuse, but his reasoning was that, um, oh, because we're also addicted to our technologies <laughs> yes. that we're not going to, you know, we're so obsessed. We're going to have to keep logged in, which I, I guess, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I mean, like, sure. I, I guess all five of them could have just like run away to a cabin and lived without technology for the rest of their lives to avoid the ghost. But mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I assumed it was something like, you know, if you like, uh, like if they hang up the phone again, they all die or something like that. Yeah. That's what I assume too. And I actually, I don't even think you need to explain it because obviously this um, thing that's fucking with them can fuck with them in reality because she ends up possessing them and making them kill themselves oh, in yeah, yeah, you're right. whatever way. So like, it's not, it doesn't actually seem to be connected to the, like she is in the internet somehow, you know, like, <laughs> sure. I'm not like making fun of that really. Cause I think it's not a terrible, I mean, it's, it's weird, but I like it. But she also can affect you in physical reality without the use of like the internet. It seems yeah. like like the the ship has already sailed. You've already and, interacted with her. So and I think they explain that with Val too, because Val like she's like, you know what? Screw this. I'm I'm yeah. like I'm calling the cops. I'm signing off. But they and, still got her. And then yeah, and then yeah. like she yeah. comes back and she just drank a bunch of bleach, and now dies yeah. with but her I, poor dog in the background. Oh, I know that was sad and stressful. I was th like listening to that dog bark. Uh, like yeah. all the way through the movie and then them talking over each other it does set me up to be very stressed like we were talking about <laughs> at the beginning but i i think that because i read that too from him and i the reasoning annoyed me a little bit it was like okay bro this is not a movie about like the your addiction to your <laughs> the addiction to the internet <laughs> yeah your no. cell phone or your computer <laughs> i was just like don't say anything dude you made this the worse that's what I'm saying. Well, I was like, I guess that's the reason. I'd rather it just us like podcasters down the road just realize, maybe analyze it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Come up with our own reasons why you couldn't, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I mean that yeah, that's that's interesting take. I also liked maybe I like this movie a lot more than I thought it I did. Um the scene where she uses chat rule was it chat roulette? Mm -hmm. Yeah chat roulette to get help um yes was yeah. interesting i because it's like a like i like how money many different things it fills itself with because it could have been like a boring like 60 minute thing of just you staring at a, at a computer screen but mm -hmm. they really fill you up with different things like while this like was it a countdown or that that was happening at this time. Yeah, she was counting down till they had to answer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the, like stakes are high, so she just goes on chat roulette to like get help. Was like, oh, smart. Mm -hmm. You have to stick to the internet idea, and you went online and went to one of these places. I think I thought that was smart. Yeah, and then <laughs> still. Lara's ghost was preventing her from like typing the address into the chat. Yeah, or like yeah, yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, I I like too how um the the chat roulette situation seemed very realistic. It's like all these different people that just like are clicking off of her or like don't want to chat. That one MVP who was like, "Oh yeah, let me just call the cops for you." Yeah, and I'm oh, like, what? yeah. And her conversation was real on point. Was real. I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> this is nice. This is yeah. satisfying." Yeah. <laughs> she was like, "Oh, thank God, someone is gonna help her out." <laughs> <laughs> but on that on that topic, though, I think another thing that this movie actually did really well was the constant like you, you kept going back like four or five times to like you have hope that like something is going to this one thing is going to work. Like you had the chat roulette where like you had the person got the police on the phone and like you thought that Jess was going to be fine. And then no, Jess turns up dead. And like when Ken starts like sending around that Trojan destroyer to like try to purge whatever it was like, I, I thought that the, Ooh, that the movie scene did like, get me. kept kept giving you like, like the, like, Oh, the, like they're going to be okay. Everything's going to work out. And then no, it doesn't work. And now another one of them is dead. That scene yeah. where they sent the, the what'd you say? The Trojan, the Trojan destroyer, the Trojan destroyer. Is that an actual thing? Yeah. Trojans are like a type of virus that like they, they, they look like a regular program, but there's malicious code behind it. It's why it's called um, a Trojan, like the Trojan horse. Well, I thought that was, so realistic at least for me because that would be me i would have many tabs and be like oh my god like yeah. you have to close out of them and i'm like fuck 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 and then i stress myself out trying to close everything out that would be me i i i would be the one to stall stall our lives online <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Lots of panic clicking. I liked that. Oh, like, yeah. oh God. <laughs> oh, and I love the use of music. Oh, yeah. And how it like kept being a like, uh, it, it, clearly Laura was picking the song. Like, there was one where it's how you lie, lie, lie. as She's yeah. talking about how she didn't sleep with Adam. That was good. Yeah, I liked, I did too. I have it also as something I didn't like, but not during that part. I did like that. It was in the beginning. Uh, She turned on music, Blair, right? Turned on music Mm -hmm. for her boyfriend, Lil Thang going on. I totally (laughs) get it. And then there's this weird thing. So they all want to disconnect this, the Skype call and then join back in. She's like, okay, we'll just all recall, we'll call each other and let's join back in. And so everyone disconnects and then she turns on music. And then she goes here and I'm like, she kept just turning <laughs> on music in every gap of, of time. And I was like, why is she doing that? Maybe that's how teenage brains work. I don't know. But I, I just jotted that down. I know Tawny's kind of like I, this. These were the moments she's like, oh, Felicia, these were the moments <laughs> that were that were sticking out to me because they were unrealistic. And I think I was really wanting to. Um, grasp on to those realistic moments. And I was like, why did, I wonder why they made that decision. Maybe because she's not talking when she's actually doing the thing. So they want to fill it with music or something. Yeah. And then the back and forth conversations were driving me bonkers because n- no one was saying anything. Like, she's just like, <laughs> he goes, um, Laura, maybe a ghost. Yeah. And she's, and she's like, maybe your account's hacked instead of, I just feel like you would say, Mitch, I'm getting those messages too. And then you would uh, like unmute yourself and go, hey, you guys, you guys, is are any of you getting messages from Laura? We're getting these messages. So all of these kind of components drove me crazy. But I did like when the ghost started taking over the music and, and it wouldn't because mm-hmm. it made you feel like anxious and chaotic. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, I, I lost my thought. Oh, Sorry. my God. No, no. I, you've mentioned so many good things that I was like, ah, what was I going to say? It's okay. I'll get it back. Though, oh, I did remember last time where I was like, I thought of something and then forgot about it. Yes, I yes. remember it now. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this, I remember seeing this movie. I don't think I saw it in theaters, but I think it's perfect movie to watch on your laptop because that's how I mm. watched it. Yeah, uh, me too. Back in 2014, my first apartment, I'm literally just like clicking, I'm just watching on my bed. Perfect. It's it just like perfect experience to watch it through there. I do feel like I kind of missed an experience. Uh, like a part of the experience watching it on a tv i watched yeah. it on my laptop too had my headphones <sighs> in and i and i didn't know i didn't know that that was going to be the experience yeah. just happened to work out <laughs> yeah perfect i highly recommend it for people <laughs> so just another little thing that i i thought was kind of funny and this again is just another example of how like we just know more things now than we did when this came out is like something that was supposed to be like ooh scary moment is after uh after mitch immediately jumps to the conclusion that this is a ghost and not just somebody hacking her account um after he immediately jumps to that conclusion and then sends her that message with the link to unexplained.net about don't answer messages from the dead uh then she like goes and searches like laura barnes whatever and the first thing that comes up is that unexplained.net page and it's supposed to be like oh my god like it's like is she's a dead person and like she's messaging us it's clearly a ghost and like really we're looking at that now being like oh this is just search engine optimization your computer knows you were just on that website <laughs> so like, it recommends that to you first like this isn't scary this is like how that works <laughs> I love that. It's Laura Burns. <laughs> Laura Barnes. I didn't even think about it that way. I thought I I was also just like, yeah, that makes sense. You were just there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Now that you mention it, I don't think I saw it that way either. I think it was the top search result and I, I didn't even think about it. I was just, like, just like, yeah. <laughs> This would be me, though. I feel like I would be the one clicking around random websites at that time and just being like scaring myself at late at night. Um, Because I mean, that's I feel like that's what I did in like high school. Mm. Oh, yeah, I do that now. I get all I would have been totally spiraled down a rabbit hole in, you know, searching this. Um, I really but back lo- in that time you had like so many unsafe sites like, oh, yeah, Angel oh, yeah. Fire, like sites where you're just like someone obviously created really badly but the content it's like this person hung themselves late and i'm like oh god <laughs> <laughs> yes i like the elements of those real things like live leak you know yeah. website and all of this mm-hmm. to try to make it feel like really real to you 
So I have some yeah. stuff on that. <gasps> oh. Because it was inspired by the actual suicides of Amanda Todd and Aubrey <gasps> Audrey Pot. Do you guys oh, know shoot. about these stories? Mm-mm. No. So I'll give you you're like, like little... me neither. I thought you guys were going to do like <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of them I think you're going to remember like seeing some stuff about. Um, okay. But there's I just got like little blurbs, so I don't have like a ton of information on these. Um, but the first one, Audrey Pott was a 15 year old student at Saratoga High School in, in Saratoga, California, who died by suicide on September 12th, 2012. She had been sexually assaulted by at a party eight days earlier, and pictures of the assault were posted online with oh. accompanying bullying. So it was like a party of like 10 people. Obviously, everybody's drunk. Yeah. Three or more pe- of these teenagers, which is fucking insane to me. That's like 30 fucking percent of this 10 people party. So, yeah. Uh, they assaulted her Ugh. and um, they eventually pled guilty and served jail time in juvie because they're underage for the sexual assault. And there is a documentary titled Audrey and Daisy about the sexual assaults and the social media bullying of Audrey Pott and Daisy Coleman, which premiered at Sundance in 2016. Mm. Oh, my God. It's horrible. Really terrible. I mean, that's uh, it's strange that they didn't put anything like inspired by true events or something like that obviously probably in bad taste to to do something like that um but i mean it is the reality of things and i think that's something that i do like about this movie that there are real elements to it Mm -hmm. yeah you have the supernatural element of about everything but i do like that the whole idea of facing bullying in high school and also the fact that they all bully themselves even though they're old yeah. friends they bully themselves and when they're revealing things the amount of things that you hear are like i can't believe you talked about uh my i think blair about her eating disorder and you know stuff like that and cheating and the fact and part of one part that i i don't i want to know your thoughts is why do you think blair like she obviously knew that she post the video right so why did she go all throughout this movie knowing that she did that and knowing that she needed to confess in order to stop this i think right like the website said you needed to confess in order to stop it so she could have saved her friends yeah she literally let all of her friends die yeah yeah i guess i didn't think about it that way i thought they were dead all of them no, no matter what, even if she no, confessed, but, I thought this yeah. was a revenge movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, because a lot of them, the things that that were coming up were not related to Laura, right? Like um, the the um, yeah. uh, what am I trying to say? The something about crashing the mom's car, yeah, the eating mm-hmm. disorder. Like they weren't being nice to each other. Yeah, yeah. I liked that. I, I also liked this part and how I f- it felt realistic, at least to that time. Like mm-hmm. the they're not really they, like they're a group of friends, but are they really friends? They're they're definitely a group of frenemies, you know. And they all seem to like hate each other, even though they seem to hang out and stuff. And so I felt like that could be very true to reality. It's not like I was in a group like this, <laughs> but yeah. like I feel like especially in the time the friend groups. Uh, shown in media were like this a lot Mm -hmm. you know so Mm -hmm. like i think it i don't know i think that's why it makes sense to me a little bit why they're not talking to each other like you said earlier felicia like why wouldn't you tell each other like hey are you getting these messages we're not really talking about like a super close friend group here these are people who just like pretend to be friends yeah they like party together and yeah it goes it also goes to one specific part of the movie too where they said i i think uh uh, forgot Billy 227 mm-hmm. that's what it was Billy 227 said to the group who uh, would have risked uh, Jess's life in order to save their own Yeah, and I believe it was Adam mm-hmm. who and now you kind of like learn that maybe there's a different conversation happening being like oh mm. you know I can kill Jess um, and I'll save you and they were able to do that no problem which is kind of like we can't blame blair 100 percent because she also was at fault but they're all probably trying to save their own asses at the same time so proves that they really don't care about each other that much that's yeah. an interesting thought so i thought they were a real close group of friends 
Mm -hmm. but they were like real teenagers. I'm, I'm going to think back. Like it, when I was a teenager, nothing like this, nothing horrible. I was not horrible, (laughs) but in different situations where maybe where we're gossiping about each other. Right. Or where, Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. It seems really idealistic that you'd have a group of friends that are just like, do or die forever. I love you through and through. I'm not saying that friendship doesn't happen. I don't think it's the majority of friendships where yeah. you have those those real close friends like that. So these were the friends, because I, I think that I did have friends like this, where you all hung out at school. Some of them were assholes, but it was yeah. like it was kind of your crew. Um, so I thought that I, I did like that. I thought that was very believable. Things happen, say, like with Blair sleeping with that one guy when they were drunk. Shouldn't have still, you know, I, I don't know. I thought it was real realistic teenagers that are close friends. Um And yeah, and they're trying to, like you said, save their ass on the back end. If you have this thing, you see already that your friend can, or I guess we don't know when that happened, is, or Val, they're killing themselves. So you know that it could be you. So if the the ghost says, all right, hey, Tawny, who of everyone on this call would you kill to save your own life? Um, I think it just takes a real strong person to go, no one, kill me. You know, right, I yeah. feel like you, yeah. would, no, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just, you want to think you would Fair. do that. You want to think Fair. you would do that, but. I mean, yeah, like 15. Yeah, yeah, 15. yeah yes. that's that's true. It's like, yeah. man, my mom's going to kill me. Okay, so <laughs> um, okay, so I'll tell you about the other one, Amanda Todd. This is the one that I think you might remember um, seeing stuff about. Because mm-hmm. uh, it was, they also showed a clip of a video that Laura Barnes recorded of her with the um, written notes. Do you guys remember yes, this? Yes, yes, yes. I yeah. do remember, yeah. So that was, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, not the video in the movie, obviously, but that story was about Amanda Todd. So mm. she was a 15-year-old Canadian student and a victim of cyberbullying who hanged herself at her home in Port, I don't know how to say that, oh. British Columbia, Canada. Before her death, Todd posted a video on YouTube, which she made a series of flashcards to tell her experience of being blackmailed into exposing her breasts via webcam and of being bullied and physically assaulted. The viral, the video, viral video, wait, sorry, the video went viral after her death, resulting in an international media attention. So I don't, again, I kind of just really skimmed this story, but I think it was like, I think it was like a chat roulette situation. She was like online and um, this guy like badgered her for so long and she eventually like showed her breasts and he took like screenshots or screen recordings of it and blackmailed her with them and eventually like released it to like Mm -hmm. all the people in her school and so that led to intense bullying she and her family actually moved like twice they went to new cities new schools and this guy found her found people at the school pretended to be like a student a new student and sent the images the images again so she dealt with like extreme like depression and anxiety over all of this and was like yeah it just seems like it was fucking awful like torturous like this person and it was i think i think it was probably like a handful of people i i read a little bit about like they found some guy who was actually like in a different country who was a little old like he was like you know in his 30s or something which is fucking insane like why are you fucking with this 15 year old but um he is i think currently serving sentences for other things and oh, okay. there's a trial pending in 2022 it for canada where he will be i think sent back to canada to to answer for these specific crimes for her okay but like what the fuck this is awful this one yeah. really scared me in the way that like you cannot fucking escape this person who is out to ruin your fucking life the, that is legitimately oh. horrifying and disgusting yeah. um it's uh, i can't i can't believe it i feel so awful for for that girl yeah you know just no way to escape that that it i mean you uh, so sad. It, yeah it's tough and these really sweet hard. kids that think that that's the only way out and they end their lives yeah. you know oh that sucks i mean fuck as an adult i'd be like oh, I'd, oh yeah. what am i supposed to do here i mean the the parents you're sure are even like jesus christ leave us the fuck alone yeah, yeah. like it's so it's infuriating. Why would you spend this much time and energy 
And that's why, like, you know, as much as like we, you know, try to make light of the situation before with like chat roulette or plays like Omegle, I believe that's how you pronounce it, Omegle, that sounds um, right. which is also like a video chat service. Those places are scary. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I, I don't even think you can honestly just put a random birth date and high school kids can interact with s- sorts of many people on there and obviously you know at that time security wasn't as strict you could just really talk with anybody and do whatever um which is a scary thing so i feel like this movie really came at a good time to address something like this um and i wish that these elements that we're talking about these specific topics were elevated a little bit more might yeah. maybe push to the front a little bit more because uh oh maybe we were just ready at that time to talk about these kind of things but now there are movies that have you know portrayed these kind of acts in a way where like we're really thinking about them instead of like a slasher ghost story yeah yeah i agree with that because one one piece where um if I don't know that it was highlight highlighted, but every single person is a part of this bullying. So when Mm -hmm. they post a picture and you see all the comments, all of those people commenting are a part of the bullying. So when it was the uh, Laura video, oh, you're gross, you whore, blah, 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 blah. And then they showed um, them when they were showing pictures of these kids, then everyone was like, oh, you know, say, um, I don't know why I'm forgetting everyone's names, but the main girl. Blair. Blair. Sorry, Blair. Mm-hmm. I was going to call Blair's. her Billy, but Blair, <laughs> um, when they posted that she actually posted the video. Oh, you're horrible. Oh, my God. Da, 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 da. You're such and, a monster. Yeah. And you the, can yeah. look at it and say, yeah, she is. OK, now I'm a part of now I'm a part of exactly. the problem. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I uh, actually. It, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no I was just going to, you know, add to that the idea and I, this is why I never say, I know some people still to this day say this like jokingly, but the idea of saying, kill yourself. Oh, God. The, and especially when, when I see that on screen and all the comments and they're just in like, Laura Barnes, kill yourself because they're trying to be funny. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's not fun. I can't even imagine saying that to somebody. What a horrific yeah, thing can't, to say. I can't. No way. Not even as a joke. I can't even think of a joke yeah. where I would say that. It's horrible. And the, and kids are doing that. People mm-hmm. are doing that. Yeah. I would really like to hope and think that this is less of a problem than it has been in the past. I don't think it is. Ugh. I think we're more aware of it. I think... With stories like uh, the the two girls that we mentioned, um, I feel like we're more aware of it. There's more people that this is happening to. And so now we're kind of like maybe much stronger with it. But I feel like it's still happening, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't mean to say like I, I'm going to sound just like a old grandpa. Like, <laughs> oh, stop. Stop bullying. It's still happening to this day. But no, no. I mean, I, I genuinely mean it. I would have said it back then. I'll say it right now bullying is not okay this movie really does a a a decent job at addressing this and being like bullying is not okay um and well and it also really touches on like the ways that like you don't think you're bullying but you really are because they they also say at one point like Blair says, "Oh, like we didn't, we didn't mean it. Like they, everyone like, was doing they all, it. Everyone was doing it. It was just like it was, it was like the funny, cool thing to do is just like make a fake account, and, like post something to this to this video, and uh, and and she's like, we we didn't mean it. And Laura's like, it doesn't doesn't matter. Like I still I still kill myself yeah. because of this. Yeah, it still affected me. Obviously, yeah, like oh. no matter how much you didn't mean." And which I yeah. personally think is a lie. You know when you're yeah. doing something bad. You know it. Yeah. And which at one point where Ken says uh, via the chat, um, who says like, Laura Barnes was mean. She was a bully. So she got what does she deserve? Like, or st- yeah. something to that range yeah. where they would say something like that about someone who just passed away or the anniversary of, of her passing away. So I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. I think that's like that's where it gets real sinister is where you start to feel like if you're like justified in doing the thing, right? Because then it yeah. doesn't feel like you're doing anything wrong. Oh, she was mean to everybody else, so she should be able to take it. And it's just like, 
it's, you know, none of well, it. Well, because I good. think at some point at the end, Blair, which I do like that it circles back at the beginning, um, when the haunting starts there, when you look at the Facebook page or something where you where she's trying to fill out something about claiming something, um, it says, got her, got her, got her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it then circles back at the end because we, when we find out the revelation that Blair was the one who videotaped this and posted it, she turns to herself and says, got her. And I'm like, what does that mean? So you were intending to do something this bad to her. And of course, last minute things where she's like on the Facebook and telling uh, Laura ghost being like, oh no, remember us? We were friends. We loved each other. Right. And we did it. I'm like, okay. Okay, Blair. Nice try. Nice, nice try. try. <laughs> <laughs> I do have um, one more thing just back on the uh, on the subject of it being like the first a movie to be shot like this. Mm -hmm. um, so the producer conceived of the idea of the film um, and talked to the writer about it actually back in like 1999 or 2000, oh, which wow. was almost 15 years before the film actually came into production so maybe they were the first people you know maybe it wasn't the first to come out but maybe they yeah. were the first to have the idea and mm -hmm. i made a list of other ones that are like this i don't know if you guys have seen any of these other ones but we've already mentioned the collingswood story i haven't seen mm -hmm. that that's from 2016 the den was the only other one that i found that i thought might be a contender because that was from 2013 yeah it's also a russian movie i believe the director of this movie is russian and I, I have seen this, but I don't remember anything about it. Have you guys seen this one? I haven't. The Den? Yeah. No, we haven't seen it. I definitely have seen it promoted uh, elsewhere, but I have not seen the actual film. Okay. And then we've got Friend Request from 2016, which we've already talked a little bit about. And then I also made note of Searching from 2018 and Host. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have seen that one? Felicia, have I've you seen, seen Searching. Mm -hmm. No, I've only seen host and this okay. one above all those movies all right searching is definitely more of a thriller that's yeah. the one with the dad trying to find the daughter who disappeared yeah right? very um, like yeah. if you're true crime junkies this is definitely like for you guys felicia i feel like you'd really like it searching? i really love searching it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay yeah um yeah and then host we've all seen that oh love mm -hmm. that movie yeah I do personally. And I and I think you're right. I think host kind of like perfected what this movie wanted to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um you had mentioned earlier, one of you had mentioned earlier that you saw this one first. Um, I saw host first. So maybe then going into um, this one, I was kind of underwhelmed in the beginning. Yeah. Because of my experience with host. Yeah. Where I was terrified. I and it's like unfriended. It's uh, uh, this goes back to it being a little bit dated. It's definitely of its time, and you know it it does some interesting things. But then you have hosts where like the whole world can unanimously be like relate to this. Like everyone mm -hmm. could be like, it's a Zoom call that goes yeah. really really wrong um, during times like the pandemic. Um, you know you can relate to that. It gets really. Um, really scary and also love that they can combine a lot of things and be what like a little bit over 60 minutes yeah i love that it's tight it's a very tight movie and mm -hmm. it was yeah perfect timing like you're saying just coming out right when the pandemic started and then so there's a reason also for them not to meet up because i was thinking to myself watching this movie now i'm like this feels like a pandemic movie but way before so like why are these people not yeah. hanging out in person I didn't I wasn't like video chatting with people until like 2020 like this is like a fairly <laughs> new i mean I was, I was like, as a teenager, I was terrified to get into that like chat roulette shit. So I never even got close to touching that when I was younger. Same. Mm -hmm. um, I was just too scared by all the true crime that my grandmother was watching <laughs> about kids getting abducted from people online. So I was mm -hmm. like, not touching that with 10 foot, foot pole. Yeah. But um, I was like, why are these kids not hanging out in person? This is weird. In 2014? Why I don't not? think I've ever used... I have to admit, I don't think I've used Skype to the length that these kids have used skype yeah it yeah. definitely yeah. seems like they do it all the time yeah you just be on the phone <laughs> yeah i would just, just call people phone. yeah yeah i don't yeah. think i video chatted anybody until nowadays mm -hmm. <laughs> back then yeah we would just get together we hung out on the curb <laughs> we just right. like, talked to the people mall. as they drove by yeah hung out the mall <laughs> yeah it's also like 
Mitch and Blair aren't together. They're obviously don't have anything going on that night. Why can't, and their dads are off being together. Why can't they be in the same room? Like have a date night or something. Yeah. I don't know. Because don't know. without that, the movie wouldn't have The movie won't That's movie. True. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I have this note and I'm wondering if anybody remembers what I'm talking about. I need to write my notes better. I said, I liked when the phone moved, but the screen looked frozen. Then she fell. What's that? That must have been Val when she had. I Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh the phone was moving. It. That's right. OK, so when Val mm-hmm. was in there before um, before she dropped to the ground, um, the phone was moving, vibrating towards her. Mm-hmm. But she looked oh. completely frozen. I don't know. I know. Not- I noticed it enough. I was like, oh, and then also, boom, she was on the ground. I was like, oh, that was. That was creepy the way that that felt. I didn't really know what I was seeing. And also, second watch, there was right about 14, 13 minutes, I think it was. um, Adam, when he had those dark hallways behind him, there was like a face, Mm -hmm. like really (gasps) fast. And it was like in the glitch. And there was this face in the black hallway. And yeah. then it went on and I was like, oh, I got to look for more of these That's because cool. at first when you're watching it, there's so much going on. Yeah, like, I, I did write that. I was getting confused a little bit when they said, not your boyfriend. It was, they sent the picture and it was her and uh, Adam. I thought Adam looked like Adam, but I wasn't 100 percent yet because it was pretty early on. So I wasn't mm-hmm. clear what was happening. I wasn't clear who was getting messages, who weren't. And then like she got a video. I thought only she did. Then she's like, don't show it. Don't show it. So there was so much. <sighs> Yes, you're right. Yeah. yeah, I was getting a little confused on what were people seeing, what weren't they. Um, so going back the second time, now I know everything is happening. Able to look in the background a little bit more for different things. I want to see. You should take a picture of it. I will. I'll take a picture <laughs> of it and I'll post it. Yeah, it was like I did, I rewound it a, a few times just to make sure I wasn't like hoping that there was a face back there. But yeah, it looked kind of like face. I was I like hoping I for that. I wanted a little bit more of those like eerie little things that happen yeah. in the back. That's what I was hoping for. So I'm so sad that I missed that. <laughs> yeah. I'll never be able to find it either. Like if I went to go look for it right now, <laughs> I know. I'll take a picture of it and I'll send it to you guys and we can post it. I love that stuff. Nothing scares Cody more than uh, if you look harder at pictures or something mm. there. I love I this love also. Me too. I love this. It's so scary. Oh, I will go it's down so a good. rabbit hole with like the scariest photos or yes. like yes. Cre- yes. things you don't see in photos. It's creepy AF. I'm like, <laughs> I love it. I will, I will sit down and watch that. No problem. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, I don't have any other notes as far as like trivia or anything. Does anybody else have any notes before we move on to Maybe rating? Else? I don't think so. I do have like, I just like. Oh, we do have something. Oh, nice. What are chonies? (laughs) Underwear. Underwear, right? I didn't know what this was either. Oh, they said something like, oh, is that your chonies? And I'm like, what? (laughs) Chonies is underwear because she was in her underwear. Remember, that's the very beginning, right? When they were. Uh, Yeah. 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 It's it's underwear. I may be very old. (laughs) I don't know. What well, is. I don't think. I mean, I don't think that's like an old thing. These kids, this is 2014 with teenagers, that's but I've true. never heard it. Oh. I never heard it. I yeah. was like, "What is that?" Because like I, I, I like got from the context clues that it was underwear, but I've just I've right. never heard anybody use that word before. Me. Gosh, <laughs> why have I heard it so often? I'm just like Wait, wondering but- now. Why is this something that I've heard a lot? Is it a brand or is it just like what people call underwear? Just like what people call underwear. That's funny. Choney. Maybe it's like a regional <laughs> thing. Maybe. I don't know. Like tidy whiteies is like something like that. Where did people these say kids tidy live? Whiteys. Fresno. I did live in Northern California. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> Maybe it's a California we all, thing. We all, said, we all said hella and we all said chonies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just was going to say like I feel like I've always wanted to say hella and I feel like I just can't. <laughs> It's a Northern California thing. You totally can say it. Like I've heard it. <laughs> hella. And I and it's I want to say cool. it. It just doesn't feel good coming out of my mouth. You yeah. know what I mean? I just hella. can't. You know what I can't stop saying, and I'm embarrassed about it. Um, you know how normal, like not not normal people, but like right, you know, regularly you can say literally. Yeah. I cannot <laughs> stop saying literally. Jeez. Oh yeah, like um, what is that from? 
It's from a show, isn't it? With uh, Rob it Lowe. From, uh, or Parks and Rec. Yeah, because he says it literally. I yeah. can't. <gasps> mm -hmm. We're at the end, but my husband was at the grocery store. Yes. He just got home. Everyone's clapping for you, babe. <laughs> we made it. I'm Cheers. over here, but. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I committed hey. to this trick. It's never too late, Felicia. It's never too late <laughs> never for your too late. Irish coffee. <laughs> but yeah, I can't stop saying literally. I I heard it a few times while I was editing our podcast. And I was like, what am I doing? Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> I feel like we all have those things. Yeah. Um, so I say literally all the time. Literally, literally. So now my eight-year-old, she... Oh, I've ruined her. She's telling oh, no. me a story last night. She's like, mom, literally, there was this thing, literally, blah, 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 literally. I'm like, okay. All right. I say that too much. I get it. But she just says it naturally. And she says it every other word. Literally. This guy, literally. It was so scary. Literally. I'm like, oh no. I, I pick up people's, I don't know what it is. It's just, I pick up people's either energy and mm -hmm. the things they say. If I'm yeah. at least around them or listen to them a, a little bit, doesn't even have to be a lot. I start saying the things that they say. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm yeah, honoring them. This. I'm honoring mm -hmm. and respecting yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> so our last episode, we had my friend Justin on. I definitely, mm -hmm. Justin says in a way a lot. Like he'll be like something, you know, it was like this and like that in a way. And I definitely picked that up from oh him. And now I God. say it a lot. But I'm like, oh, I definitely got that from Justin. <laughs> What you know, there's something also. So, I think it ha in our podcast and also in our YouTube channel, I can never not say, with that being said, yeah, I need other mm -hmm. words to say because I always say, well, with that being said, um, because it's like a perfect transition yes. bunch of words, like I, but what else, like, can I say? So, next, I say next. So. <laughs> so, I say so, and Felicia says, all right, those are our. <laughs> Goes, all right. Go, all right. There all we right. go. <laughs> all right. How y'all feeling? Are you ready to rate this? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Felicia, oh, how are you feeling? Oh, so <laughs> I'm, you sorry. see me get all serious. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like... I'm assessing Felicia's face. I think that's a no. <laughs> no, it's okay. I think I can just if I could go last, that would be that would be really good. Okay. Okay. Shall I go first? Yeah, yes, let's do you guys it. Are ready. Sorry, we're all, all right. <laughs> we take this I, so seriously. We're like non-committal. We're like, <laughs> I know. We're like, wait. Are I, I we think it's like an official <laughs> thing that we're gonna like move to the next. All right. So my rating for this movie, I think, out of five, is, out of five. I f so I originally was gonna give this a three. I think our conversation on bumping it up to three and a half. All right. Mm -hmm. Because you know the movie was scary, um, but. I do think there was a lot of it that was like done really well and yeah. it was like a unique way of telling the story. And I, you know, I got to give him props for that. Nice. Yeah, I am. But I do like this movie. I honestly do. I think I, I enjoyed it. I would rewatch it. I think it's really rewatchable. So I am going to give it a maybe weird four solid mm. four for Ooh. me. I really liked it. I would rewatch it. And Talking about it, I think, made me enjoy it a little bit more. Gotcha. I think that's true for me also. Talking about it uh, made me go up a little bit. So I, I came in thinking I was going to give it a three. I think mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a 3.25. Just a little nice. higher, but... <laughs> <laughs> but it was there was a lot of good, you know? Like, I think the concept was great. I feel like they really were good at building tension and yeah. bringing like bringing in waves of that kind of stuff. Something else too that we didn't really get into, but I think they did a good job is they did a good job of showing like tone or intent through her uh, clicking around and like right typing stuff and then like deleting it and like yeah. retyping or like deleting parts of the sentence. I feel like that's something that I haven't seen a lot of. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that. I thought that was like a very small thing that was. Well, there were also moments where she would use her cursor just to circle to like hesitate a little bit too. Where yeah. I was like, ah, uh -huh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. You like get it. how she's feeling without mm -hmm. actually seeing her face, which is like not something, you know, that we're used to watching movies. Yeah. It was just, I think it was very creative. Which um, I don't know who's in charge of that. Like, is that the director or is that um, 
the editor or not think, Blair. She didn't do that. <laughs> I think in this case it was the editor because they. I read that they shot it all with GoPros, like for their webcams. And okay. I think that they didn't actually shoot it over Skype. And so they just had probably the raw footage that they then edited on to the, you know, whatever was happening on the background desktop and stuff. So I think it was an Got editor it. editing choice. <laughs> Cool. Which oh, was do you effective. think that is that why she wasn't saying anything? Like maybe because she wasn't even really the person that was typing the stuff at the end of the. I think so. Uh, yeah, I think so. Gotcha. Yeah. In reality, yeah. Okay. But you know, they could have gone some pickups with her. Yeah. I don't well, know. that's what I was saying. Like when they when some things that are happening to her on her end, but then like when we get back to the call and we see her her reaction and her acting isn't the same reaction that i was expecting based on what we just saw so that's yeah. why i was like there's a disconnect and i feel like yeah they could have probably followed up with like oh this doesn't look right can we just go back and shoot reshoot these things yeah i think you could bridge that gap in the edit right like again you could even get pickups like felicia was saying of her being like oh my god or what the fuck or some mm. just some kind of muttering to herself that would yeah. kind of like bridge that better yeah. but i think that there were the things that i didn't love was like yeah the kills I feel like some of it was a little cheesy. Some of it was like a little not realistic. And I don't know that that's the part that I didn't like and why I feel like I can't give it a higher score. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it is a good movie even now watching it, you know, way later. So. All right. So I think I'm with Cody on this. I'm going to give it a three. I was going to give it a 2.9. So that's what I was coming in based on other movies I've scored um, that I liked it better than, but not as much as others. So I was coming in at a 2.9 because I wasn't sure if I liked it as much as Tragedy Girls, which I had a three as well. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I did. And especially after talking mm -hmm. about it and talking it through, I also went up a little bit by point one, And so <laughs> I'm giving it a three. What did you guys, uh, if you can remind me, if or if you remember, the, what did you rate a uh, host? Oh, oh I did a, a five, <laughs> five on host. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking because uh, I do have our. Did we watch that like our first year? Of being it was a our podcast. First year. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, did you guys see the the sequel? The sequel mm -mm. for Unfriended. Oh, <gasps> yeah, I did. Oh, was it not Dark good? Web. Yeah. I wanted to because, I mean, the trailer got me, but you saw it? What do you think? Yeah. It, it was, it's been a long time because I watched it oh. probably right when it came out. And I think it came out in 2017, 2018. I don't remember a lot about it. I think I remember it being scary. Did you watch it? I, I watched it and it i don't like it I, okay. it's not mm -hmm. as good as this one that one takes a more realistic like there's a society of uh people who are working the dark web and this person who happens to have a, a laptop that they bought through so, like a resell was a person who was part of the dark web and so now the the oh. laptop is like being <laughs> yeah it's it's kind of like unfriended but it's more complicated and it gets a little out there in my mm. opinion okay. um have you seen it you haven't seen it. no no because uh you watched it right after we watched this originally and i stopped watching and then <laughs> um and then i think like the next day or later that week i was at work and you finished watching unfriended and then watched unfriended dark web like mm -hmm. in the middle of the day with the curtains drawn all the lights <laughs> off on your laptop love it <laughs> best best day off <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> interesting i feel like i remember liking parts of it probably but i don't know if i'm even thinking of the right movie at this point based on what you just said like i i think there what i is there like an element of people actually being killed on there like you're seeing video of people actually being murdered okay i think that's what i liked about it yeah there, i mean the aspects of the when they get into dark web footage is really interesting and disturbing and okay uh, i like those elements but it's just uh there's the whole aspect where there's like there's a society of people purposely hunting other people and they're also all over the like the they're they're skyping from different places where they're at and it's still like a group of friends um i could go into that that movie as well but like um it's okay it's not okay. my favorite it does i wouldn't rate it a, as high as i did this movie gotcha okay okay, okay. good to know yeah <laughs> um awesome well I believe that wraps us up. 
So do you guys want to plug your podcast one more time and tell people where to find you and stuff? Do you want to be on the spot and plug the podcast? Yeah. <gasps> so uh, make sure that you come and give our podcast a listen. We are, uh, again, the horror bandwagon. It's all about uh, Sergio loving horror and me usually not. And <laughs> finding out how we both feel about movies we watch together. Um, mm -hmm. And also how a bunch of people are always on your side. I'm always like, Cody has like really bad opinions or not, not bad opinions. What am I saying? Wow. Okay, Cody has <laughs> questionable opinions. This is the end <laughs> of the horror bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> but then like all our guests are like, you know what? Cody has a point. Actually, Cody's right. I'm like, what is happening here? <laughs> Anyways, continue, my dear. Um, and uh, so we are available on Instagram at the horror bandwagon, on Twitter at horror bandwagon. No, the, you can catch our YouTube channel, the horror bandwagon, where uh, we watch movies. You actually get to watch my reaction uh, to these movies live in a lot of cases. Uh, we also stream on, on most Sundays. I think we're taking a, a couple weeks off right now, um, but we hope to be back soon every Sunday evening at 7 ish PM Eastern. And you can come watch, watch us watch scary stuff on YouTube and play horror <sighs> video games and just have a good time. Dude, that's I was going to ask you, that's so fun. Sorry. Yeah, do you mostly do <laughs> horror video games for the stream? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We actually, he's actually really good at it. He's mm. we're playing Outlast and he is killing it. And Outlast is horrifying and also stressful as fuck. Um, so it yeah. is pretty fun. I gotta say, I mm. enjoy it. <laughs> that is nice. so much fun. I love that. Yeah. I'm going to have to watch. Yes. Also, if you need a uh, recommended video for our YouTube channel, I think you should watch us watching the Terrifier mm. because mm. Cody was not ready for that movie. Mm. No way, Jose. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm writing this down right now. I am going to watch this. <laughs> Me too. Are you guys fans or not fans? Uh, I'm a fan. <laughs> Cody was, is not, not watching that movie ever again. No, we are apparently going to watch Terrifier 2 when it comes out. I'm gonna watch it he was upset <laughs> he was upset like he you could see he was upset <laughs> i've never seen terrifier <sighs> yeah because there's a lot of movies i don't watch them on my own because i know we're gonna do them mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah tawny do, did you like did you see terrifier or did you not like terrifier i don't like it it's not and we usually don't try to talk about how we feel about movies but i think i've already mentioned to felicia before that it's just oh, okay okay i don't know everybody loves that movie i feel like i'm deaf i feel like i'm in the in the minority i didn't i just my main thing is that i i like art the clown as a horror killer like yeah. the look of him looks really good i think how he acts is really good uh, good really good um but i think there was a lot flawed and i know there's a lot flawed in the movie itself and even the director himself knows that that first movie is flawed yeah. because he has stated that the second one is the movie he wanted to make oh interesting okay yes yeah, so I'm, I'm really interested to see my like, big thing was that like art yeah. needs a little bit of a balance he can't be like on a rampage a hundred percent of the time there needs to be something where we're rooting for someone so like in the second one, they did create some sort of heroine that goes up against him. So I'm like, OK, let's see. How yeah, it goes. I like that. Yeah, I will watch it. But. <laughs> um, we're really excited to be on your show. And on oh your show, God, yes. we are talking about audition. If you can't see all of the audition posters behind Tawny, she also bought me those for my birthday or Christmas or something. <sighs> I can't wait to frame them. We've also, uh, I think it's like, this will be our third time, third or fourth time talking It'll about audition. It'll be your third time, my, my second. Yeah, because I went on oh another podcast to talk about it. So we, and we're, I'm still so excited to yeah, talk I'm about so it. Excited. So. Okay, good. I was like, I hope we're not just gonna like repeat <laughs> oh, no. the same thing. <laughs> no, I would, have, I would have said, hey, yeah, maybe not. No, mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. And Tony's like, yeah. And we're like, yeah. Well, this is gonna be a first time watch <laughs> for <gasps> us. Oh, for both sure. It? Yeah, for both of us. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, I got I'm cold so chills. I know. <laughs> We're actually uh, planning to see if we can videotape ourselves watching it and do something like whenever we create a Patreon, put it up there so people can see what our live reactions are after the episode comes out. Um, but we're very excited to cover it. It's been a it's been a movie on my list to cover because I feel like it's definitely a different sort of horror movie that Cody has not seen yet. <laughs> yeah, and I am along for the ride and I'm sure I'll have thoughts. Mm. Oh, I can't wait 
for your oh. live. Re- I'm not going to give anything away, but I can't wait for okay. your live reaction. Um, just thinking about what mine was. I just can't wait to see. What I, you guys and I feel like this, this conversation too, like it informs a little bit just in a different way. I'm also not going to give anything away, okay. but I'm so excited. I think it'll be really interesting. It'll be a really interesting conversation. I'm so stoked. To talk All about right. It again. Can't wait. If there are like a couple movies that Felicia and I could go on the uh, like on a road show, like seriously, <laughs> and talk about it over and over again and never get sick of it, mm-hmm. Audition would be one, mm-hmm. and I think Antichrist would be the other. But oh, we yeah. don't want to subject people to watching Antichrist unless they're like Ooh. fully, fully ready for that one. <laughs> See, I only heard of Antichrist through like YouTubers who like covered it. See, I am such a weirdo. I I like disturbing films like that are really pushed the edge, but I won't watch them. I'll watch other people talk about it. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I yeah. I'm. I don't know. Maybe I have a problem, but if someone goes, that was really disturbing. I'm like, what was that called again? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, let me write that down. Let me write okay. that down. How's that spelled? Yeah, okay. I had, I was so nervous because this was our first season and I was like, Tawny, I really want to choose Antichrist, but I'm also very scared and, you know, all of this. And, and yeah, yeah. those are the two. Yeah. I feel like we could get doctorates in those, like meaning yeah. not that we know that much about them, but we would love to delve in and study that much. <laughs> to be yeah, able to get a doctorate on it we love it <laughs> yeah but anyways thank you so, so much it was so much fun having you we really loved getting to know you better and <laughs> and just sharing this space with you so we really appreciate you being here yeah, yeah. this was a ton of fun thank you for yeah we us. had a blast it was so Good. great finally seeing you guys and yes. talking to you guys in person so it won't be a uh zoom uh, but you, you know <laughs> love it thank you so much for having us on uh, we really had a great time awesome <gasps> thank you yeah because <laughs> i go on the tiktok account and i'm like oh i love this i love it i'm uh, obsessed <laughs> <laughs> i need to get better at that oh uh, thank you so much we're so excited um at, for all of you out there you can find us at two chicks and a horror flick instagram and two chicks and horror flick.com our main hubs and from there you can branch out to whatever social platform you want to see it or see us and hear us and engage with us on um you can also get, have us on youtube you can also find links in our bio it just it goes to all the places including um our patreon if you want to um contribute to the show and also um get some really cool two chicks merch anything you need we got your back join in our horror community on discord literally anything you need at two chicks in a horror flick or two chicks in a horror flick.com and what else tony i think i took one of your things i think you literally. usually talk about literally you usually <laughs> talk about patreon and i took it <laughs> no that's fine um i do want to mention also because I'm, I'm gonna swap with you next week we don't know what our episode is going to be. It's our patron pick. So I actually think by the time this airs, you might have like a day to throw in <laughs> your suggestions, depending yeah. on our timing. Um, so we take suggestions from Instagram. So anybody can throw in their idea. And then we take those suggestions, narrow them down to like four or five max, and then let our Patreon members vote on which movie we're going to watch next. So um, definitely engage with us on there if you have a movie you want us to watch and talk about. But that's it. The last thing is just um, give us a rating, review, and subscribe on whatever podcatcher you're listening to us. That's how you can support the show. And we will see you guys next week. We hope you have such a good night. No nightmares. 